In this video tutorial, we're going to talk about JavaScript variable and how they are used in a D3.js visualization. Uh, here I have a very simple line chart uh, D3 template. I'm going to explain a couple of uh, variables that are important and frequently seen in the D3.js document. Uh, first of all, there are numbers. You can see here the width is 800 and the height is 450. Second type, important type is a uh, string. Uh, you can see here the y-axis label is a price uh, with a dollar sign uh, as is shown right here. And then uh, the next type that is a lot uh, that's used a lot is a hash. Uh, here is the margin of the visualization is defined as a hash with the key R being able uh, being top right bottom and left uh, a hash is a key value pair data structure uh, what it means is you can take in the key uh, and it will give you back the value uh, here's a, a quick example if you say margin dot left it will return the value of 20 Margin.right will return also 20. Margin bottom is going to return 30. And then the next uh, type of uh, variable is an array. In this case, uh, data is an array uh, of data points. Here, that is loaded from the data tab. Um, one of the useful debugging skill is opening the developer console here and I can add in just a, little, a console log uh, this statement means that it will print out the data data structure into the console and I'm just gonna refresh uh, notice on v.io if I hit control enter it will refresh and rerun the visualization code as you can see uh, Data is an array of objects, uh, which means it has close and date uh, field that are loaded from the CSV here. That's another important data structure. Um, you can add access data by index. So this is the first element of the data array. Uh, and then data one is the second element of the data array. So those are the basic primitive types of variables in JavaScript. And uh, there are more complex types. Uh, for example, uh, this variable x-axis uh, is a D3 axis. Um, just think it as an object that can provide the functionality for D3 axis. Uh, which does some magic uh, like time scale, um, formatting time, and then figure out how to place the data point on it. Um, for now, I uh, just think it has some magical function that D3 handles for us, but it can be a variable and can be declared here and used later, uh, right here. So. The next part is uh, with variable, we can do operations on variable. Um, for example, with width, you can do uh, subtraction. Uh, with number, I'm sorry, you can do subtraction or addition. So let's say here I'm, I want to reduce it to 500. Uh, and then when I refresh, you can, I can immediately see the width is being uh, reduced 300 point. And now I just want to expand it a little bit more. I can see, uh, or a little bit less, right? Uh, a little bit more. Uh, oops. So that's one up of the operations. And I can do plus or subtract. So that's what you can do on a arithmetic uh, integer. So here, uh, is a calculation of the width of the visualization and 
we do that uh, by subtracting margin left and margin right from the width. So the real width of the visualization is actually starting from here and then it's gonna end over here. So we have a little margin for the uh, axis label and a little space on the right so that our we can see the axis label here and uh, with string uh, we can do similar operation uh, actually only we can only do plus uh, which means it's a concatenation of strings uh, here for example I'm just gonna add a unit into the variable uh, called dollars uh, just to explain further what the dollar sign here means uh, uh, say US dollars and then uh, what this means is I'm going to concatenate this price string with the space and then the US dollar string so now let me refresh now I get a new chart with a new y-axis label uh, being updated to price dollar sign US dollars so that's the string concatenation so these are the basic operations you can do on a variable. Um, so it's pretty simple. Uh, it doesn't have to be super complicated. And these are the basic variable types you will encounter in a JavaScript visualization. So that's all we have for this first tutorial. Uh, comment on YouTube or in our support forum if you have any question. Thanks. Bye.